Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Automation Podcast, brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and on today's show we'll be discussing non-volatile and volatile PLC memory. So what is non-volatile memory? Well, simply put, it's memory which doesn't lose its contents when it's powered off. It could be a double EEPROM, as we used with older PLCs, or it could be for our more modern devices, compact flash or SD cards. Now, as high-end PC users know, non-volatile memory has come a long way in the last 20 years. Today, you can actually swap out your legacy hard drive, a form of non-volatile memory which uses rotating media, with a new solid-state drive or SSD which is many times faster. In fact, as non-volatile memory speeds have increased and the prices have come down, we've seen another form of rotating media, the floppy disk, become completely replaced by newer non-volatile memory devices like USB flash drives. However, while non-volatile memory has many advantages, today it's nowhere near as fast as volatile memory, like the RAM you find in your personal computer or gaming console. For this reason, Most high-speed systems still rely on RAM and other forms of volatile memory for high-speed operations, and they typically limit their use of non-volatile memory to storage. This is the case with most PLCs today. In order for them to run your code and update registers with sub-millisecond performance, PLCs rely heavily on high-speed volatile memory for runtime operations. But... Volatile memory has one big downside. It loses its contents when power is lost. Because of this, most PLCs utilize a power backup mechanism, either using batteries or capacitors, to maintain power to volatile memory through a power cycle or power outage. Or, in some cases, just long enough for the contents of volatile memory to be copied to non-volatile memory. So let's look at some PLC examples of volatile and non-volatile memory. The Allen Bradley PLC5 ships with only volatile memory on board. So to avoid loss of your program when you cycle power or turn your system off for the night, the PLC5 also comes with a AA-sized battery to maintain power to your volatile memory. This battery will keep your volatile memory of your PLC5 powered for weeks, if not months. However, if that battery is removed when power is off, you'll lose your entire PLC5 program. To address that, the PLC5 also has a slot for an optional double EEPROM, which is an older form of non-volatile memory. Assuming the program is loaded on the double EEPROM, it will be used as a backup memory location. So if power is turned off and the battery is bad, your processor will load the program from the double EEPROM. Another example we'll look at is the Slick 503 4 and 5. Similar to the PLC5, it does come with a battery to back up the onboard high-speed volatile memory. However, since this battery is located on the back of the circuit board and can only be reached by pulling the processor out of the chassis and therefore removing power from the processor at the same time, Rockwell also included a capacitor on the circuit board to maintain power to the volatile memory so the battery could be exchanged while the processor was removed without losing your onboard program. That capacitor will back up your volatile memory for up to three days depending on conditions. Also like the PLC5, the Slick 503, 4, and 5 have the ability to accept a double EEPROM module which is also on the back of the circuit board. When that module is installed and loaded with a program, it can be used as a backup memory location so if the battery dies and your program and volatile memory is lost, you can load the program from that non-volatile location. In our final example, let's look at Rockwell's newest PLCs, the Control Logics L7 series, as well as the L1, 2, and 3 series of the Compact Logics. These latest gen multi-core processors have completely eliminated the need for batteries by including two additional components. The first component is an onboard non-volatile flash memory chip and the second component is a supercapacitor. So when power is turned off to one of these new processors, the capacitor holds power on the volatile memory long enough for its entire contents to be transferred to the onboard non-volatile memory. Then when power is turned back on, that onboard non-volatile memory is loaded into the high-speed volatile memory. 
These new processors also include an SD card slot and a 1 gigabyte SD card, which is used in the same fashion as we used the double E proms for the PLC5 and the Slick 500. When you install the SD card into the processor and transfer the program to it, it can be used as a backup memory location in case anything ever happens to the volatile memory. As well as, if a program change is going to be made in another part of the world and mailed to you, it can be sent in on that SD card, inserted, power cycled to the PLC, and then that program can be loaded. Well, that's it. That's everything I plan to discuss on non-volatile and volatile memory in the PLC. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, please don't hesitate to share them with us by replying to this episode's blog post at theautomationpodcast.com. And I should probably also mention that we actually have a short URL that goes to the same place. It is www.link2tap, that's L-I-N-K-T-O-T-A-P dot com. So that's a short URL that links directly to theautomationpodcast.com. And we'll save you some typing if you want to get to the site. And as always, you can always stay up to date with all the Insight websites by visiting insightsinautomation.com or by following me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, where I'm known as Mr. Sean Tierney. Before we go, let's look at what's coming up on our next podcast. Tune in later this week for Episode 8, where we discuss the different load modes for non-volatile memory when used with the Compact and Control Logix processors. Well, that's it for episode seven of the Automation Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Tierney. And until next time, peace.